Okay, <clears throat> this is a couple of interesting spacey snippets that were on the uh, the television, the Channel 7 uh, Sunrise Breakfast Show this morning. Uh, this was at uh, 7.22 this morning, I recorded this. Um, and uh, I thought this was quite interesting and, and worth commenting on. So we've got the uh, the fast uh, radio burst that's been repeating. It's the first one they found that's got a, uh, a really nice pattern to it so they can study it. Um, and uh, there's a bit, been a bit of talk uh, about this uh, this space signal uh, uh, recently amongst our conspiracy uh, theorist friends. I saw uh, I saw one of our favourite conspiracy buffoons, Ben Emlyn Jones, on the Kev Baker show the other day. And uh, uh, looking at some of the other programmes on the Kev Baker show, I can see why he would have Ben Emlyn Jones on there. It's absolute rubbish, <laughs> absolute drivel, a, a lot of patronising nonsense. But uh, anyway, Ben Emily Jones was on there and he said, oh yes, well this is, uh, this is a lot like the wow signal, you know, the famous wow signal. And of course, the repeating fast radio burst is nothing whatsoever, <laughs> nothing like the wow signal. The wow signal, uh, which was a, uh, a narrow band signal that was uh, detected uh, within the, what they call the, um, the water hole uh, between the hydrogen and hydroxyl lines, if you look on a... If you look at with a radio telescope, you look at the radio spectrum, there's two spikes that stick up out of the noise floor. Uh, one is hydrogen at uh, 1420 megs, and another one is uh, hydroxyl, which is at 1.6 one, one, uh, uh, gigs. So you've got 1.4 gigs, approximately 1.6 gigs. And the uh, because these things stick out so predominantly, if uh, an alien species wanted to attract our attention, they would stick a needle up in between those two needles. They'd stick a narrowband signal up in between there, and uh, it would be obviously an artificially generated signal. Uh, especially if it had something called modulation, which is the information on a signal. Even if you couldn't decode it, you could tell that it was an artificial signal because it would have modulation on it. Anyway, fast radio bursts are nothing like the wow signal. Um, <clears throat> they are very wide band in, in nature, so it, they wouldn't stick up, they wouldn't appear between the two needles. They're very broad band with, they go right across, I can't remember the exact frequencies they cover, but they're very, very broad band. And they're not the sort of they're not the sort of signals you would generate if you wanted to attract somebody's attention because um, they don't stand out as being artificial for a start. You'd be wasting an awful lot of power filling up that entire bandwidth with a reasonable signal strength. So whatever these fast radio bursts are, they are not artificial. Uh, they're not artificial in nature. They're not being generated by a species with a radio transmitter or some other device. They're in some sort of natural occurrence. Uh, anyway, so we'll have a look at this and then we'll move quickly on. Because they continue on into the Space Force, which I thought was an interesting snippet, we'll, uh, we'll do both of them in one video. It shouldn't take too long. The man in the know is our favourite astrophysicist. To be fair, the only astrophysicist that we have on this program, but still our favourite. Absolutely. Brad Tucker. Number good one is all you do. Yeah, that's so right. Lovely. Brad, right. it's so good uh, to talk to you. And yes, it is the fact that these are happening every 16 days that has sort of pricked the ears of astrophysicists. That's right. So, you know, we've had some of them in the past that have just been single bursts. But the fact that this repeats precisely at a 16-day cycle, uh, and then there's variations that, again, precisely, like timing, like clockwork, has got us excited. Now, it probably isn't aliens. You might think, oh, maybe it's a lighthouse. And, you know, it's never aliens until the one time it is. But in this case, we probably think it might be a, something orbiting a black hole. So think of our moon goes perfectly around the Earth. There'll be 29 days. We go around the, the sun every 365.2422 days. So things with periods work like clockwork. And so we think there might be a star orbiting around a black hole giving this burst of light traveling, as you said, fast distances in space. Okay. So, Brad, these single burst radio waves, they're, they're not uncommon. I mean, they happen, but it, it, it's just that pattern, isn't it? Exactly, it's, it's that regular because once you have one of them, you know, it's hard, you want to follow it up. So if it just bursts once, you can't really do any more study about it. So the fact that this one's been going like clockwork allows different telescopes to look at it and study it. We can try and pinpoint where in the universe it is, what galaxies come from, and maybe what part of what galaxy is. So it's kind of like a, a nice beacon, like a lighthouse on the shore. When you talk about what this could be, and you're saying, look, we think it's this, do astrophysicists sort of take a step in the dark on that, like their best guess, or, or is it all just based on science? 
So there's a lot of modeling that goes in. So you kind of, uh, it's kind of like you would take different ingredients, like you're baking, and well, you throw them in and you see, does something in the result look like what you want? You know, it's like you see the, the nice picture in the cookbook and what you turn out to be yes. is, is not the same. No, that's, that's astrophysics, essentially, in a nutshell. You try and get the right <laughs> ingredients to make that picture look right. Oh, Brad, that's perfect. Hey, listen, while we've got you, the US Space Force chief has made headlines. He's issued a what? Yeah, OK, so that's what the astrophysicists are excited about. Uh, not that it may be aliens. <laughs> Sorry, I've frozen that with a really nasty expression on his face. But not that it might be aliens, but that because it's a, uh, a regularly repeating signal, they've been monitoring it for the last 409 days, chances are it's going to be there forever, um, be, they can study it with the fast radio bursts in the past it's one burst they last for milliseconds or microseconds and they're gone whereas this is a repeating thing they can turn their telescopes on it they can study it and they can do some research on it and I'm sure there'll be a few PhDs gotten out of that one now um, uh, the other thing that uh, the other snippet that I thought was worth showing you. Sorry about this. This is a bit awkward because this um, I'm actually pointing the camera at the big screen, which is at four meters across, <laughs> and this is recorded on the hard drive on the on the DVD machine from the from the television this morning. So I've got to talk quickly because I don't know what the timeout period is on this. It might go black. Anyway, this is what the this is what the space force is really all about. You know, the conspiracy theorists are getting very excited, saying. <gasps> Trump's, uh, Trump said we need a space force, we've got to fight aliens, aliens are real, they're coming here, they're a threat, and we have to have a space force to um, defeat them, to, uh, <laughs> to, to defeat their attack. And of course this is absolute nonsense, um, if uh, aliens, <laughs> if extraterrestrial aliens came here with hostile intent, um, we would have no realistic defence against them, we would be wiped out. Um, I've said it before, but we wouldn't get in a shooting war with, a shooting war with aliens anyway. Um, they'd wipe us out biologically, they'd disperse something in the atmosphere and we'd all die very, very quickly. We'd never get to meet an alien. Uh, that way most of the planet is, in, is intact, you know, all the structures are intact, power still being generated by nuclear power stations, etc. Until they get their power systems sorted out, um, the worst thing they'd have to deal with is all the dead bodies. And um, if they wiped us out and then came back three or four years later, they wouldn't even have to worry about that, they'd just sweep up the bones. Anyway, going off at a bit of a tangent, but if there was an alien invasion, that's how it would be done. I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> now, uh, <clears throat> the Space Force, of course, has got nothing whatsoever to do with fighting aliens. <laughs> it's laughable. We could not successfully fight aliens. We would never get in a shooting war with aliens. Anyway, look, uh, let's, uh, let's just uh, see what this, uh, this is all about. to Russia for stalking an American spy craft. Now, um, what are these satellites doing and how serious is this? You know, kind of this is the, the birth, essentially, of what we're talking about with Space Force. So what we have is a satellite, and Russia's launched another satellite. Uh, now, when you put a satellite in it, you have predefined orbits. Think of, like, where airplanes fly in the Earth. So you put it in a place where nothing else is going to be, so you could talk to it in private. Well, Russia has parked, essentially, another satellite near the U.S. satellite, so when the U.S. talks to its satellite, it can listen in. But at the same time, you know those Russian babushka dolls? Well, it actually had another satellite satellite <gasps> pop out of one and then a second one popped out of that like the Russian babushka dolls. Yeah and it was pretty close about 160 kilometers away I think. The issue with this apart from the fact that they're being that they're um, clearly listening in or we believe that they're listening in and they're acting like what they call inspector satellites. Um, the Space Force chief has said this could create a very dangerous situation in space so could this result in our first space conflict? Yeah, th this is where it's headed. Because you, ha if you have, if you don't know where it is, you can crash into it. So you can destroy a two billion dollar satellite. You can then just slightly tamper with the satellite to disable it. So it's not going to necessarily be soldiers fighting. It is this type of conflict that I think everyone's worried about. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Laser beams being fired into space. Uh, Brad, thank you very much. Always great to talk to you. Yes. Yeah. So there we go. So the space force, the space force is being set up to deal with Russian and Chinese uh, threats in space. It has nothing whatsoever to do with aliens. So forget what any of these conspiracy idiots will say about the Space Force being set up 
you know, <clears throat> and the secret space program, and it's absolute bloody rubbish, absolute nonsense. Um, it's all about uh, dealing with threats from Russia and China and anybody else that manages to um, uh, put a satellite into orbit that could tamper with, uh, with, with US satellites. All right, well, I'll leave a, a link below to a, to a, a video that um, Joe from the Carolinas posted a little while ago about the Space Force, so you can get a more realistic idea of what it's all about. And um, if you haven't seen uh, Joe from the Carolinas channel, go and check it out, because Joe does some very good stuff. All right, well, uh, again, thanks for watching, and uh, maybe I'll catch you again.